Good morning. How are you all today? So I'm fully vaccinated now. I Well, it hasn't been 10 days since my second shot, but I have kind of a funny story to tell because um, I, I can't remember if I already told you this, but my daughter wanted, she made a video of us getting our second shot because we all went together to do it at the convention center. And there's a video of us doing a happy dance. And then she also wanted me to um, do a little video of me the day after talking about my side effects and how I was feeling. So we got vaccinated. Um, and then the next day, I felt great. I mean, I just had a little bit of a sore arm that night. And so I took a video of myself saying, thumbs up. You guys should go do this. Nothing to be afraid of. And and so... Um, then the next day I got really sick. I got really nauseous and um, aches and chills and felt pretty crummy for about three days. But my daughter wouldn't let me remake the video because she didn't want the refugees and immigrants to be even more leery of the vaccine than they are now because a lot of them are elderly and have um, pre-existing conditions. So she felt it was really important to um, persuade them to do it. So I felt a little bad, but, um, yeah, I felt like I got off scot-free. So I hope you all did well with your vaccines. Um, I, Greg didn't feel a thing with his second one and we both got Pfizer, but he's just a lot healthier than me and he always has been. So sometimes I think it's just genetics, right? Anyway, I am going to read to you all from Devotionals Daily today. It's written by a woman who has an incredible testimony. I've read her book, which is called Hope Heals. And then I saw that she and her husband have just written a second book. But I think that you will be blessed by her story. And she starts with the verse, I will never leave you. And that's from John 14, 18. When I first woke from a sudden near fatal brainstem stroke, I could hardly move, nor could I speak. I was 26 years old and instinctively wanted to nurse my six-month-old baby, but I could no longer hold him, much less act as his mommy. I was surrounded by doctors and nurses and loved ones constantly, but I had never felt more alone. A tangled mass of blood vessels ruptured, causing the stroke and had to be removed along with half of my cerebellum. Miraculously, I could think and process fairly normally, but people didn't realize it at first since I couldn't talk. I spent months essentially entombed in a severely restricted body. Many spoke to me like I wasn't there as we talked or as if I was cognitively impaired. Weeks led to muted months and I was given a message board to type on with my one working hand. I repeatedly, I repeatedly wrote over and over, I am the same on the inside. I am the same on the inside. Life in a broken world means all of us experience loneliness and isolation in various ways. While it is excruciating to be left alone, a startling question we don't always get to ask ourselves is, what if we only had ourselves and our own thoughts and feelings to talk to? Where would we be? Mercifully, the Lord never intended for us to be alone, especially in the deepest place, our souls. As Jesus was preparing to lead the disciples, in the cross, death, and then resurrection, he reassured them that his spiritual presence would be with them forever. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you, for I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. And that's John 14, verses 16 through 18. Mining the treasures of the indwelling Holy Spirit of the resurrected Christ is ours for this lifetime and the next. Though this might sound crazy, I've come to realize I was actually fortunate to have been restricted in such a way that only true two-way conversation I could have in that darkest season of my life was with the Lord. And believe me, I've never been at a loss for words, but he outchatted me. Listen to what Christ goes on to promise us in his indwelling. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and will bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. John 14, 26. 
I had moments in the hospital when I believed my survival from the stroke was a mistake. I couldn't swallow. I couldn't eat. I couldn't be a mother to my son or a wife to my husband. I should have died. But it was as if the Lord said, I am not leaving you alone, Catherine. I am here. Because I live, you also will live. The Lord tells us in John 14, 16, that he corrects our lies and fears with the truth. The truth is my survival was not a mistake. The Lord gave me hope that he indeed meant for me to live on this earth and now with great purpose, but my greatest life is yet to come when I am one day resurrected face to face with him in a body fully restored. After 40 days in ICU, nearly two years in Rio neuro rehab, I relearned how to talk, how to walk, how to eat, how to be a wife and mom again, two years. But even before I left the hospital, I knew I had to share the hope Christ had given me. Since that time, my husband and I have begun a ministry called Hope Heals to bring Christ's hope to those who are with broken hearts and broken brains, those who feel alone in a world moving on without them. Christ has promised that despite how deeply alone we might feel in our bodies, those who seek him are anything but alone in our souls. With his spirit in us, we live and move and have our being. That is our healing, and that is our hope. Um, and the little footnote at the end says, Most of us will never have Catherine's experience, but we can and do go through periods of feeling scorchingly alone and isolated. Have you been there? Did you find Jesus there with you? So, and, I, and we've all been there this last year, haven't we? And um, I think we've all found, found Jesus there with us. So let's pray. Lord, we just thank you for that testimony and the way um, you spoke to her during that time where she couldn't speak to anyone else. And we thank you for that promise that you will never leave us and that you have sent your Holy Spirit to indwell us so that we will always be connected to you. And I pray that that would be a, a growing reality in us, a constant um, awareness that the Holy Spirit will bring to remembrance things when we need to remember them, um, bring scripture to mind when we need to um, trust in a certain aspect of who you are. And so we just thank you for that. We praise you for that. We praise you for Catherine's testimony of healing and that you would continue to use her and her husband in this wonderful ministry. Bless my friends this day. In your name we pray. Amen. Okay. Enjoy your day.